Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cinema A to B. Today, Ben and I are going to talk about the 2023 film, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. The fifth installment, if you count Kingdom of Crystal Skull. If you don't, fourth installment. But Ben, you just saw this. I saw it last week. What did you think? Yeah, I saw it last night. Good, not great is probably where I'm where I'm at with it. Um, mm-hmm. It certainly accomplished getting the bitter taste out of my mouth from Kingdom of the Crystal, Sk- Crystal Skull. And that was really all mm-hmm. I was looking for. Um, when we did our retrospective, I said, you know, I felt like it needed to be better than Temple of Doom to really move the needle. I've had time to kind of mull that over. I don't think it's better than Temple. There, there are aspects of it that are better, but as a whole, I, I'm probably much more likely to throw in Temple of Doom and watch it on a rewatch mm. than than this. But it's 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 not a bad movie. It's not even an average movie. It's 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 good. It's good. But I'm I'm interested to hear kind of your initial impression on that. So my initial impression was I walked out actually really happy with this movie. So much like you, this delivered on being better than Crystal Skull. Because I I really dislike Crystal Skull. Like I despise it. Like I joke that it, I, it doesn't even exist. Like, and I will never watch it again. Never ever. Don't need to. I'm good. Like this one, I will watch again. And I know you said when we did the introspective that, uh, or retrospective, excuse me, that this had to beat Temple. I would say while it didn't beat Temple, I'm with you on that. It's much closer in the quality of Temple or being on par with Temple than it is with Crystal Skull. Um, in some ways, I like it better. I feel. Obviously, this wasn't done by Spielberg. So James Mangold, I think um, yes. is his name, it did a fantastic job, like really captured Indy. Um, honestly, I felt some of the action sequences went too long, especially the car chase mm-hmm. was really just a little too long. Like kind of like your old adage, if we cut 20 minutes of this from this movie, it'd be a much better movie. And a lot of that was the ac- action sequences. Like the story was there. The dialogue was, you know, it, it wasn't amazing dialogue, but it was head and shoulders above kingdom of crystal skull. I didn't really cringe at mu- much of the dialogue. Um, again, I have no problems with an old indie. I really liked it. They played into that. It really felt good. Um, I do laugh that basically the odd numbered Indiana Jones deal with Nazis. So, you know, one, three and five now and two and four don't. So um, I, you know, I was fine with them going back to Nazis with, I was fine with um, some of the other aspects of the movie, try not to spoil it, but yeah, walked out happy. Yeah. So, and it wasn't a great viewing experience either. So oh, really? we had, well, so we had booked our three seats kind of, you know, not the best seats possible, but really good ones mm-hmm. like in the middle. And then people book seats literally right next to us. So like we were crammed in, even though the theater had probably 20 people in it and there was plenty of seats elsewhere, but they packed in. And they, the people on our sides were not good theater goers. Now, luckily, the two next to me and one of them was a young kid. They moved like 20 minutes in. They moved. And so my viewing experience became much better. But my buddy at the other end, like it did not. They stayed the entire time. It was frustrating. Yeah, that that can be but. frustrating. Yeah, this is uh, this had all the pressure in the world on it um, to mm-hmm. deliver. I, I think some of that was alleviated just because of how bad Kingdom of the Crystal Skull really is. And so yeah. expectations were kind of lowered, but um, this thing had a massive marketing campaign behind it. Obviously, we've seen the box office numbers now. It's it's not doing well. I just think people are kind of tired of the the shtick behind an old an old indie. I don't think there's enough theater avid theater goers that are going to pay fifteen bucks to go watch Harrison Ford do it up again. I. Mm -hmm. I think I think those folks will watch this movie, but I think they're just going to wait until it's available to watch at home. I I, I, that's that's kind of where I'm at with this. I don't think it has any I don't think it's anything against him or not wanting to watch this. My prediction is this will do really well on streaming and the Mm -hmm. Blu-ray and DVD sales, I bet, will be pretty strong. I just think people are waiting to watch at home in the comfort of their own home because you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about an older audience, a much mm-hmm. older audience. We're kind of, you and I were kind of on the tail end of this thing. Raiders was what, 
81. When we were born. Yeah. yeah. So 81, 85, 89. Yeah. So and then yeah, the audience for this, the key audience is is much much older, and those folks I don't think want to deal with the kid behind them laughing and yelling, or the person in front of them on their phone. I don't even want to do it, and you know, and I'm okay with that. But if if this came out pre pandemic, I would say would have done better. Yeah, it definitely would have had a, a little bit because, but post pandemic and how streaming has kind of just taken over and people just, I mean, obviously box office numbers were going down anyways before the pandemic, but since then they really have really not ever recovered. So it's, I, I wish we would change somehow change how we talk about movies of saying, because obviously, you know, with so many movies coming out in the theaters, if it doesn't do well, it's opening weekend. It's kind of screwed, you know, at this point, like, because, Almost every week, especially for the summer, you have something new out that's going to kind of take that spot of what people are going to go see. So you can't give it two, three, four weeks or even a couple months like, you know, even when we were growing up with movies. If it doesn't bang out the first weekend and make its money, it's a bomb. But like these things have legs, you know, there's so many movies that have legs and with streaming stuff like allow it to don't call it a bomb. Let it run its course. Over time, right. you know, and see, you know, in a year from now, what does it look like? Did it get much play on streaming services? Yeah, I think this if, will do fine. Then, I think this yeah. will do fine after the theatrical. But yeah. um, as far as what it did right, and we will attempt to, to stay relatively spoiler free, I think, on this. Um, mm. The, uh, you know, the big talk of the town was the the deep fake young indie. Um, mm-hmm. Largely, it works really well. In fact, there's there's certain moments it's frankly pretty astonishing, but it didn't feel like the same to my eye. It didn't feel like the same visual effects house had entire control over those sequences and shots. It felt like maybe two or three were kind of piecing it together because Mm -hmm. it went from hyper ultra convincing to some areas where it just wasn't great. And some of it had to do with the shot selection Anytime they put him in really hyper close up, it fell apart. But there was the, the stuff in medium shot and then especially the stuff in lower light. Mm, wow. And and I think if they had a chance, I think they would agree with me and and there would be a potential to go back and just decide to shoot it differently and mm-hmm. shoot him more from medium shot and not in the close up and and play with the light and let the light hide hide the defect basically the the defect in the deep fake and i think you'd have something really pretty wild but it largely works it largely works it, it does i will agree with you for me it really worked the hardest the i didn't have as much problem with the highlight and the close ups my biggest problem was anytime he talked it just felt off well, his voice is like, aged too yeah, his voice is H2, but I mean, but the there's something about the timing between the lips and the 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 sound of the voice. It just didn't work. But like when he's not talking, even if he's emoting or doing whatever, as long as he's not talking, I was all in. Like this, I'm like, I'm looking at, you know, Harrison Ford from 1981. Like it was excellent. This is definitely not some of the older stuff. I think I would have I would have worked around the deficiencies in the software and not, and just mm-hmm. made the creative decision that we're not going to have him talking a whole lot in close up yeah. with the de aging. I just, I don't think it's there yet. I think it's probably still another five years out. Um, but yeah, there's some of those action sequences. I was absolutely stunning with, that with his, able to do that, yeah. yeah. And so yeah, that was that was a really nice way to to you know kind of honor the character, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I don't. It's going to be kind of tough. I don't want to play spoiler. Yeah. On this. <laughs> we already spoiled um, the Nazis. Apparently, so that works. So. And even Harrison as old Indy works for me. Like mm-hmm. he, I love he, it. Okay he's still it. you know does he move quite as well as he used to? No, but the the dude is still in absolutely fantastic shape. I mean, he really is. And so he moves relatively well and they, sh- and they kind of made a decision on the way they, they shoot him and, 
and have, you know, the physicality of the character, they took his age into account and mm-hmm. didn't, they, they didn't make me, the viewer, try to have suspension of disbelief with old Indy and what he's kind of capable of doing. So that worked. Um, yeah. A few of the things that for me that didn't work, no particular order. <laughs> <laughs> This character, Teddy. Oh, yeah. Ethan Isidore. Okay, so I got nothing against uh, Ethan. I think Ethan's fine. I think this. Yeah. I think the script was trash with that character. There's nothing unique about him. He's literally a space filler. This is not short round. No. And it's all in the writing. Short round yeah. was great writing and then obviously a great performance. But you don't get that with him. And so he just feels like a, he just feels like he's occupying space. Um, my other complaint, Boyd Hallbrook. I like Boyd. Boyd is, Boyd is very talented. I first saw Boyd in Narcos, the -hmm. first season in Narcos, and he's tremendous. And they didn't give him anything to do in this. Like it could have been anybody, any B level actor. So I was like, you wasted him. Like, I, I'm sure he saw the opportunity was just like, I'm going to take it. It's Indiana oh, Jones. Yeah. Why would I not do this? But he's completely underutilized. Um, and then I'm still on I'm still on the fence with with Phoebe. Like, I'm just <laughs> I, I'm not ready to make I'm not ready to make a firm decision on her yet. Because okay. for one, OK, I did not find her annoying. She's not mm-hmm. an annoying character. She's not like. Temple of Doom with Kate Capshaw. I didn't find her annoying, but I'm <laughs> I'm having a hard time. Like I don't know, I don't know how I don't know how I feel about the character. It's really less to do with her and more to do with the way they wrote the character. I just don't. Mm-hmm. She doesn't have a lot of redeeming qualities, and nor do you have a lot to. I mean, from the get go, she very quickly turns you off. You know of not wanting to root for her and they never kind of bring her back into the fold of wanting to root for her. You know, you're constantly always rooting for Indy, even when their purposes are the same. You know, it's like, I, I agree with you. I have no problems with her as an actor. No, I think but, she's, I think she's actually really yeah. quite good and she's a writer as but well. I definitely, yeah. But I definitely feel that kind of much like Teddy, that they did the character wrong or they didn't give it enough character beats or a character arc because she feels very much the same at the end, you know, or, or a little bit different, but not. It's not like, as good an arc I, as it could have been. No, 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 it, it's it, not. I could say the same thing about, about Mads that they under, that he feels mm-hmm. underutilized. Yeah. But Mads is Mads. I was, you know, the, you know, obviously the moment you saw him, like he's the, he's the bad He's the bad guy. Like, but what what a career this guy has had. I mean, think of the major cinematic franchises this man has been in of, you know, Indiana Jones to top off being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm-hmm. and, and Star, Star Wars. Wars. You know, he's played he's an been, excellent Hannibal Lecter in the TV yes, series. I mean, like this guy. Yeah. 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 He's, he's done. Um, and then James Bond. <laughs> yeah. And James Bond. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and consider out like he I mean, he's. I mean, he's fan. I think he's a fantastic actor. I agree. He was underutilized or he was just his normal kind of one note. It's sort of tight they're just like, yeah. They're just like, be yourself or not yourself, yeah. but be your bad character. And like, I thought he was the same as he was in Casino Royale that he was here or even in the MCU, just that kind of looking for power. Nothing much. Okay. Else. So this, um, this Thomas Crutchman that plays Colonel, the Colonel at the very beginning, did you recognize yes, what yeah. he's been in before? Because it was a nice callback. So he's 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 a Nazi colonel in this, right? And I knew it was yeah, him. I recognized immediately. I was like, wait. Was this the one from Saving Private Ryan? Or? No, well, there there is a guy from Saving Private Ryan. Okay. In it. He's in the back of the I, car. Like he's he's much yeah. older, but yeah. No, so this so Thomas Crutchman was plays Hans in Stalingrad. <sighs> 1993 oh, and, he's, yeah. and, he's, and he's very young. I mean, nine, 93, that's, yeah, that's 30 years. So, Oh my goodness. I didn't even piece that together. Yeah. And I saw him, I was like, wait, that's the, that's like the main, pretty much one of the main characters in 1993, which is a brutal, brutal film, but he plays, yeah. you know, he plays a German soldier in that as well. So it was kind of a cool callback. Um, yeah. I don't know how he feels about constantly playing Nazis, but <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was good. 
So yeah, I, I mean, I have to rewatch it now. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. He's mu- much younger man there. Um, well, I meant Indiana Jones to kind of remind myself of it because at that point I had the people next to me, so I was probably half paying attention <laughs> to the kid talking yeah. through the out entire thing, going, "What's going on? What's happening now? Like, who's that guy?" So I'd read, I'd read some early. Uh, I try not to read a bunch of reviews, but somebody was complaining that, that like, hey, they they love the way the film opened. They thought the middle of it like really drug and that they felt like that they stuck the landing on the end. And I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, I agree with the beginning and the ending that they stuck, but I I wasn't looking at my watch in the middle. The the thing moves mm-hmm. well. It's a two and I think it's two and a half hours, roughly. Two and a half hours, yeah. It I thought it moved fine. Um, if anything, yeah. sometimes the movie feels a little small for me. Okay. Like there's times where it feels a little sparse, like the frame, the image just feels sparse. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Like it, it, I don't know what it is. It just doesn't feel as, it doesn't feel as expansive as some of the other Indiana is Jones movies. Is it kind movies. of like the feeling the edges yeah, of the I camera? I could feel like, the edge yeah. of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Especially when they're in the Mediterranean, they, they I could, oh, it yeah. felt, I could, it felt like the edge of the world it, or I could see the edge of the, the world in it. So yeah, that was kind of a, an issue I had in places, not throughout. Um, but yeah, this is a, this is a good send off. I mean, I don't, I was, I felt very satisfied when the credits rolled. I, I was like that. It was fun. It had some, it had some good humor. And then, yeah, the, the Raiders callback at the end is just tremendous writing. Like that's yeah. how you write a final entry to an indie film. I would, when mm-hmm. that, when that occurred, that callback hit, I was like, yep, they, they, this covers a multitude of sins. Yes, it does. Yeah. I, I feel good send, getting the send off of this character. Um, I do agree. Like, again, I didn't actually feel as slow at all. And, Keep in mind, this was the second movie I saw. I saw pretty much back to back movies, and this was the second. So, if it was going to feel slow, it was de- this was definitely going to be this movie, and it didn't. And again, I feel like some of the action sequences needed to be kind of tightened up. Like I felt they went a little too long. Like I think the car sequence itself was like almost a half an hour. It's too. But at least that's what it felt. It like. felt too long in the like, theater. I was like, this is it, this is beautiful. It's really well done, but it's too long. But cut it down to 10 minutes, 10, 12, 15 minutes max, and you get the same experience, but yet it tightens the film up. It brings me on. Because by the end, I'm just like, can we just be done with this and move the story along? And th- and I mean, that's something to be said of most movies now where it becomes much more about the spectacle than about the actual story. And that's the frustrating part for me. I'm like, I get it. We can do these things, but everybody else is doing these things. And so now it's no longer a spectacle. It's boring. I swear. I think so I saw that chase in a, in a born sequel. <laughs> I'm sure. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, give, give, give me the, the mini, uh, born identity, you know, that, uh, car chase all the time. Yeah. Like that's so much better. Than yeah. This. But anyways, and no, and it looks like there's going to be another one of these chases in mission impossible dead reckoning part, part one as well. So yeah, yeah. that's just one big spectacle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To me. No. So, the um the kind of the, the twist near the end I didn't mm-hmm. really see coming um so that was nice the about midway through because I was like well this is feeling pretty predictable um and then it kind of shifted and the suspense was kind of back in play and I was like oh okay the, yeah I, I'm not really it's not real easy for me right now to predict where this is going to to go mm-hmm. and where it's going to end up and that's that's film that's cinema like Mm -hmm. suspense is kind of transcendent in across multiple genres like you don't want to know where you're going to go i don't want to know where i'm going to go watching a movie and this felt this felt right and and kind of suspense levels back to raiders and last crusade and temple and which i think I think Kingdom of Crystal Skull lacked the suspense element. Like it felt pretty predictable where things were headed. And it was boring and terrible. Um, I will say the MacGuffin in this one was definitely believable, but also like it had the right amount of supernatural. Like that was one of my biggest gripes about Temple of Doom. It just felt like 
too much supernatural stuff going on where Raiders and Crusade definitely had like they had obviously they had the supernatural, but it felt a lot more smaller in scope. And obviously not trying to spoil it, but this felt again, didn't was near just the end of kind of the same way with Raiders and with, with Crusade where it wasn't in all of the movie. It was just really that last yeah, bit. It was isolated. It. So it felt, yeah. And it felt, this is what indie's about. Like it's realistic up until near the end. And then we see the MacGuffin work and then it's like, Oh, Whoa, there's the spectacle. And then boom, we go back. Yeah. So it felt, felt much more faithful to the kind of tried and true formula of an mm-hmm. indie film. Yeah. 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 It did. Yeah. I think it was, it wasn't long into the movie that I was, that I felt like this feels like an Indi- Indiana Jones movie. I was pretty on, on right at the beginning. Yeah. Pretty much like, and, yeah, on board. The I think the very beginning, very, very beginning of Kingdom of Crystal Skull before it yeah. jumps to shark still felt like an indie film and then it just went bananas. And this never the first did that. Minutes? This never did that. Yeah. This stayed this stayed really pretty grounded right, like you said, right until the very end, which is how the rest of our beloved entries in this series have mm-hmm. operated. I mean, yeah, he gets himself out of crazy pickles physically. Um but that, but that's what he does yeah. in all the yeah. other movies too. But we're we're not talking about like ridiculous swinging from vines while <laughs> jeeps or surviving a nuclear blast yeah, in ref- a refrigerator. Yeah. It's one hell of a Don't refrigerator. Just, like so, pivoting a little bit with this new indie. Obviously, there's been some talk about Harrison Ford basically saying the character dies with me because there was talk of like Chris Pat Pratt taking over um, or other other actors taking over the indie thing. So do you feel like this is a Harrison Ford only character? Or do you think this should be something that should be reproduced later on, maybe after Harrison has passed, but the Indiana Jones character gets redone. And he, he obviously is talking about an adult indie because we had the young Indiana Jones series happen. The powers that be would have to, have story ideas that justified mm. bringing the character back post Harrison. And that's effectively what they've struggled to do <laughs> is, is and with Harrison, with Harrison. Yeah. yeah. Was, was come up with more fresh story beats for the character. So I'm fine with it. Concluding with him. And now if they want to reboot the young indie series, Again, for streaming with a younger mm-hmm. actor, that's fine. Cause I'm not particularly in love with, with young Indiana Jones. Like, but a lot of that was the, the budget was just oh, was paper thin. Crusade. Yeah. yeah. With, uh, was it Sean Patrick Flannery? Yeah. yeah. And he was good. He actually wasn't bad as young Indiana, but the, there was no budget for that show at all. And it showed. So yeah, I'm good. I'm good with this being the final, final curtain on the character and, and, um, and how they did it. It feels, it feels I'm, I'm okay with it. I feel like I've wrapped things yeah. up. Like I can walk away. Done. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's so. it definitely sticks the landing on the end. Mm-hmm. It really does. I agree. It's a I really agree. cool, it's a cool ending. I, yeah, that whole twist. I was like, this is cool as hell. Like, it, you know, I, I had a <laughs> smile on my face. I was like this. Yeah. This was working for me. Yeah where they, I was like, where, cause where are they going to take this? They had, they had so many different options with where they could have taken that. I mean, tons, tons, which is, which is good writing that they had. Yeah. They themselves had to decide where are we going to, where are we going to take this film and then end it and conclude it. So yeah, I will watch it again. This is not a mm-hmm. one-off for me um, at yep. all. This is, you know, this is part of the excellent, uh, four film saga that we have of, of Indiana the Jones. Quadrilogy Dude, there's of Indiana literally, Jones. there's no reason. <laughs> <laughs> there be, well, I guess story wise, there'd be one reason you'd have to watch Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, but like it. No, no, no. Like no. just suspend your disbelief of these things happened and move on yeah. and just yeah. do yourself a favor. You haven't watched Chris, Kingdom of Crystal Skull. Don't watch it. You don't need to. No. It's terrible. No. It's absolutely garbage but this is not this is not yeah well do you have any so do you have any uh kind of closing i thoughts on this before we wrap it up we're we're, 
we're closing up. We're, we're coming close to our 30 minute. <laughs> yeah, we're try, we try to keep moved. these like around a half an hour, I think, or 25 minutes or so. I don't remember what. Well, we, uh, originally we were like, these are going to be like 20 These will be 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that has not happened once. Um, no, loved it. Well, not loved it, maybe, but like really enjoyed it. Felt like, like we said, a good end to the character. And I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm settled with Harrison Ford and with Indiana Jones. So yeah. And if you've, if you've done, you've been sitting on the sideline here or sitting on the fence, deciding whether to, uh, to watch this while it's still running in theaters, I definitely would encourage you to do Do so. I, I, I think for most people, they'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I'm sure they will be there. The detractors, but I think generally speaking, if you enjoy the first three Indiana Jones movies, as much as we do, you're going to be, you're going to be pretty satisfied with the way this thing wraps up. So, and even if you haven't seen them, it's just a good adventure film. Anyway, it's like a nice, good classic sticks to its, you know, the, the formula adventure film. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. So, well, I appreciate everybody listening to another episode of cinema A to B. And if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button and that bell. If you haven't already, thanks for, uh, for catching us as we, uh, walk through, the final chapter of uh, of Indiana Jones. Thanks, everybody.